hi everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Wendy and as promised I wanted to talk today about the mystery of the vegan diet well I make it sound really kind of I don't know over the top there but really what I wanted to do is I get a lot of questions about what do I eat <laughs> you know you're vegan you don't eat meat what the heck do you eat uh, what's good to keep in your pantry and uh, can you give me some idea of some foods that uh, might be good? Well, I think it's important, you know, we we do a lot of research, we see the perfect vegans out there, and I say perfect in quotes because there is no such thing as a perfect vegan, but we see people who are just making it work day to day, year over year, making all of their own food, growing their own food, I mean really the perfect scenario for what we would all want to aspire to but most of us live like these crazy lives we have jobs that demand a lot of our time we have families demand a lot of our time and then we want some me time in the middle of that and cooking and you know really going out and spending hours finding the right produce at farmers markets and things like that can really be a little overwhelming and you start thinking, oh, there's just no way I can do this. Well, there's really a really simple way. How many more times can I say really, huh? There's a simple way to break this down and I'm going to tell you about that today. So if you're interested in knowing about that, then stick with me. I just want to talk really basically about it so that it really is something that sticks, you know, because when you walk away from this video, you want to have something you can take with you. And if I get into too much detail about stuff and, and, and make it just too overwhelming, then it's not going to stick with you. So here's one way to look at it. If you have previously been either vegetarian or you've eaten meat, uh, there's really an easy way to think about your diet as a vegan. You take whatever products, whatever items that you ate in your diet that contained animal products and you replace them with a vegan alternative. So your meals become as vast as they were before you went vegan. There are healthy vegan diets and there are unhealthy vegan diets. Of course, it, that's important to remember that you want to keep nutrition at the forefront of your diet but it doesn't mean that you have to go from eating meat to eating just vegetables and I know that uh, there's going to be some uh, there, there might there could be some folks out there that disagree with me but I'm trying to look at this from a very practical perspective that if I deprive my body of all of these things at once like I decide to give up coffee at the same time that I go vegan or I decide to give up you know sugar at the same time I go vegan then I'm really putting a lot of stress on myself and making it a lot harder than it really needs to be if you have food allergies to things like soy or gluten that's a whole different story and taking those things out of your diet are are really to help you avoid a allergic reaction or a you know a, a bad physical condition but what I'm talking about is just eating the meals that you ate before you went vegan as a vegan and it really makes it that simple so if you think about spaghetti and meatballs let's just use that as an example what would you have normally put in that you might have had uh, pasta hmm most pasta is vegan. You might have had a tomato sauce. Most marineras are vegan. Now, of course, I do put the caveat in there that you need to check everything that you purchase to make sure uh, that it doesn't contain animal products. But by and far, the majority of your marinara sauces and your pastas are vegan. And then you add, oh, what's missing? Meatballs. Well, you can get vegan alternatives to meatballs. There are several different companies out there. Rather than go into all of the details about those companies, I'm just going to direct you to veganessentials.com. There's a lot of information on there because it, it, they do sell the products, but also you can become aware of what's there. And if you see a company like Tofurky or Tofuti, 
and Ordea, then you can go to their websites and see really the whole palette of what they of what they offer, the whole menu of what they offer. And then you can start looking at these for these things at your local health food supermarket or you can also alternatively order them online. So the spaghetti and meatballs becomes not so difficult to make when you have the right ingredients and all you're doing is removing the animal products. Now, what do you put on top of your spaghetti? Well, some people like to put Parmesan cheese. You know what? You don't have to do without that either. There are vegan Parmesan cheeses. There's also nutritional yeast, which tastes, I think, a lot like Parmesan cheese. And I love both on my spaghetti or any of my um, Italian dishes. So think of it that way. Think that you're going to take, what? Well, let me see, I used to put sausage in my spaghetti sauce. There are vegan sausages. And once you start looking at it that way, then it's a matter of finding the one that you like the most, preparing it the way it tastes the best, and you have your regular diet that you ate before, only without the animal products. It takes, like I said, a little bit of research but you can find these things. They are available, but they're becoming more and more available even at your local regular old supermarket. And you can find these things, try them out, figuring out the rest, best way to make them. And then you have no problem with your meal planning. So think about tacos, the way you used to make tacos. The only thing that we, we make tacos all the time. The only thing that we've had to make and you know an alternative to uh, in tacos is the ground beef so we use meatless you know uh, what would we call it <laughs> ground beef uh, we use a sour cream that is made up of veganase and lemon juice that's all I mix those two things together and it tastes better than any store-bought sour cream you can find and daya cheese uh, which is also a non uh, animal product cheese that is really good if you're going to use it in a melted form or if you're just putting a little bit on a taco it has all those flavors mixed together um, it, it really tastes good you would not know that these things are vegan if you were a carnivore eating them so you can make anything you just have to find the vegan alternative for it so think soup to nuts there are a few things that I've not been able to find, but you know what? I don't really want those. So let's, I think I mentioned this before, crab legs, shrimp, you know, uh, fish. Um, there, there's a lot of things that I'm not really interested in eating anymore. I don't really need it to taste like a chicken or taste like a, a cow or taste like a fish. Um, I don't want it to taste just like milk. I didn't really like milk anyways. Um, but I, I've noticed that like as you go through this journey, your, your palate changes as well. And so these things start to become more um, suitable for you. If you're looking for texture, you're looking for uh, creaminess, you're looking for uh, the, the smokiness of certain types of foods, and you can get that. Uh, for instance, when I make my sausage, I cut it up and I add a little olive oil to the pan so that I can get that same, I don't want to say greasy, that's not the right word, but that same texture of juice to the vegan sausage. And then when you fry it up and you add spices, you would never know that it's, that it's vegan. So let me talk about some of the things that I keep in my pantry all the time and in my pantry or in my refrigerator that I use a lot of. And again, it's not about um, not paying attention to fats or carbs or so on and so forth. You still, those principles still apply. <laughs> you know, you become vegan, you still need to make sure you're not taking in too much sugar or too much uh, simple carbohydrates or too, you know, too much fat because those things will still make you fat. They might make you fat at a slower rate, but they still will make you fat and unhealthy. So bear in mind when you're thinking about these things, it's about, it's about the amount, right? Okay, so we got vegan mayonnaise is a good example. There are several different companies out there that make them, and I highly recommend if you liked mayonnaise, try the vegan mayonnaise. Vegan butter, Earth Balance makes a good one. 
vegan salad dressing. So if you're not interested in always having balsamic vinaigrette or, you know, something like that, check out the vegan salad dressings. They're awesome. Vegan meats. Gardein makes them. A lot of the supermarkets make their own version now. You just have to look on the back of the package to make sure it doesn't have milk or eggs in it because for vegetarians they do make meat alternatives that contain milk or eggs. So you have to be very careful about that one. Rice pasta quinoa. You can't go wrong having those things in your pantry. Uh, lemon juice. I use a lot of it so I recommend having it fresh but also having the little uh, you know, little plastic lemons full of lemon juice. You're going to use tons of it. Uh, vegan canned soups, really good alternative, really fast, something that you can have when you don't have time to cook. Uh, lots of herbs and spices. You want to make sure your food has a lot of flavor. So think about herbs and spices. Be careful though about having too much salt. So you want to make sure that your herbs and spices don't have salt so that you can add salt if you want to. Beans. Don't forget, these are a very, very flavorful way to get a lot of protein and a lot of texture into your foods. You want to think about ways to add beans and you know legumes to your meals because they really give you that bite and you know really satisfyingly filling as well. Tortillas, both corn and flour tortillas. I like both of them and I've I've taken the corn tortillas and just like flipped them a couple times on a hot pan and then rolled them up with hummus. Absolutely out of this world. Hummus. Oh look that was the next one on the list. Hummus. You can use it for so many different things. You can use it to make um, a nice like dressing on your salad. You know you make your salad, you put oil and vinegar on it and you just put a little dollop of, of hummus in the center and then you move that all around with your lettuce and you have just a delicious meal. And it's very, it gives you again that little extra bit that makes you feel full. Marinara sauce again. Uh, onions. Use tons of onions. I love the onions and green peppers. Um, we have tons of them all the time in the house. Garlic powder is another herb um, of spice that I use a lot. I don't get garlic salt because I don't think I need to add too much salt. And of course, let's not forget the fresh fruits and veggies. So you need to expect that you should go to the store and get your fresh vegetables and fruits every week. You want to make sure that you have them on hand because if you do, then you will grab for them when it's time to have a snack. Make sure that you have them available. So again, it's not about changing everything and just making, you know, everything's so complicated and a lot of people don't understand this. You go into this maybe with some blinders on and as you realize how easy it is to make food and to have food um, that doesn't have animal products in it, then it becomes a whole lot easier from there. Trust me. So that was what I just wanted to talk a little bit about. I could get into some more detail about certain types of meals that we make. Um, if you would like to hear more about that, please comment down below. And thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day. Bye.